and we watch the presentations. The main idea is to uh, keep it simple. So maybe you've heard of this, K-I-S-S, -S, which means keep it simple. And actually there's another S, which means keep it simple, simple, keep it simple, simple right? <laughs> simple, simple. Or some people say keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> The idea is that anyone can understand it, right? You want to keep it simple, you want to keep it stupid, you want to keep it so that anyone can follow your main point. And I think, I think you should never assume people know something. Just assume they know nothing, just starting from zero. And then that way you can make your main point uh, much easier. All right, don't go away, don't go away. Kevin, oh, I'm gonna put your computer back, okay. All right, let us uh, look at, Kevin's here, and let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, go ahead, begin. Okay, uh, I have three main points, is track, buying, and cooking. And uh, when I, after my lunch, I take a walk at a supermarket, and when I walk, I smell a good, good smell, and the uh, seller uh, asked me to try some noodles. So I tried for free. And I think it's, it's good, but I feel not very hungry because I just ate my lunch. But the clerk said, if you buy one, I will give you one more for free. So I'm, I'm very interested in, in it, and I buy, buy it. I pay the money, and after I come home, I, uh, I cook in the instant noodle and boil the water and adding seasoning and noodles. And the important point, I forgot, I forgot to buy eggs. Yeah. I'm very sad because if I eat the instant noodle, I, it must be an egg in my instant noodle. So when I taste my noodles, I think it's not very well. So your main point here is, uh, oops, I forgot the egg, <laughs> right? Yes. Oops, I forgot the egg. Um, okay, so this would be what we call what? This is kind of a mm, surprise ending, right? A surprise ending. Um, putting a surprise ending in a presentation is not easy because remember, you need to have your main point at the beginning of your presentation. So how can you make a surprise ending? Well, to make a surprise ending work well, you need to have a beginning that makes everyone think one thing, and then at the ending you say another thing. So the problem here is your process is attraction, buying, cooking, which is basically like consumer consumption process, right? Purchasing process. I'm attracted, and then I buy it, and then I consume it, right? So you're using the kind of marketing psychology, which is okay, and it's a process, that's okay and it's from your personal perspective, so it's a little bit personal, but there's nothing interesting until the very end, right? So for a presentation, we wanna make sure we have something interesting at the beginning, and then at the end, you can turn it around, right? So that's a good idea, it's kind of a surprise ending, okay? All right, very good, thank you. Okay, so keep it simple is the topic of today's uh, chapter. Keep it simple. <clears throat> the objectives of this are to <clears throat> how to make visual helpers that are clear and simple. And actually, I think everyone this last week did a pretty good job. When I said keep it simple, you did. But I really wonder, I, I told you keep it simple for my class, and so you did for your presentation, but when you do your uh, thesis presentation, will you keep it simple? Will you? I don't think you will. And I think if you don't, that's a mistake. Number one, you're wasting time for nothing. Right? And number two, it just confuses things. It makes it you know, hard to follow, right? You, re you don't need all of that stuff. So let's look a little bit at graphic design today. What are the basics of graphic design? How do you make good graphic design? Let's cover that a little bit. And 
Let's also look at the visual aids. What are the different kinds of visual aids we can use? Okay. So let's look at some tips. The first tip, again, is I'm going to repeat. Keep it simple, right? Keep it simple, simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it very simple, right? Keep it simple and sweet, meaning very targeted, right on the point. Uh, don't waste anything, right? Oops, did I close my slide? I didn't mean to do that. Let me open my slide again. Whoops. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, now we're all caught up again. Okay. This means your graphics will be best when they're less complex. Complex things are really hard for people to understand, especially on a projector. It's really hard to follow. I especially don't like the things that fly around a lot and change a lot. That's very difficult to understand. Visual aids should do something. What's the reason you have this? You need to think this way. Why do I have slides? You have slides so that you can expand what you say, not just repeat what you say. You see? So, for example, in the presentation of uh, SANS, I think those slides were your chance to show more, and you, but you can't say it. Like, you want to show one of the properties, it's hard to talk about. You, what are you going to say? It's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's exciting. You can't really say that, but you can show it. So you can say something about, we have so many properties, we have one in Singapore, we have one in Macau, but then the picture so shows something else, something more. So the reason for visual aids is to show something more, not just to repeat it. So the data on your visual, age, uh, visual aids must match what you say, of course, but it expands it. You have to make the meaning very, very clear. And this is not an easy thing. So for example, with the Starbucks, you had the logos, but it was a little bit, I, it was hard for me to understand what was the main point of that, right? Maybe if you had done the logos like one and then one and then one, not just so many together, it'd be easier for me to understand. You need to make sure that you don't have any errors in your slides, right? It's very embarrassing when you make your presentation and there's errors in your slides. And when you give your defense, your, your research defense, your thesis defense, uh, the professors there will look for errors in your slides. And it's kind of troublesome because you have a main point you're talking about and then the professor says, oh, that's a spelling mistake, or that's something mistake there. It's very distracting and it makes your presentation very difficult. So. Be careful not to have errors. So you need to get it, uh, double check. Ask your friends to check for you. Also, you know, when you're making your presentations, everyone seems to feel very free to copy graphics from the internet. Uh, I do not think this is a good idea to copy graphics from the internet. And there are many reasons why. The first reason why is copying graphics is uh, you know, not legal. It's, <laughs> there's somebody else's graphics, unless unless you're sure that the graphics are uh, copyright free. And there are websites that have that, copy free, copy free graphics. But if it's not copyright free, you don't know what it is and you're just stealing someone's graphics. That's a bit of a problem. Another problem is uh, when you're just grabbing graphics from the website and you put it into your presentation, sometimes the people who are watching your presentation they've seen that graphic before and they get confused. They're like, huh, why is this in your presentation? How is this related to your presentation? So you need to uh, watch out for that. So what can we do? Well, it seems like it's an easy thing to do. You just you know, copy and you do that. But actually, there's another easy way that you should know about. And the easy way is you can just go and uh, buy a CD full of uh, pictures. <laughs> They're very cheap. They're not expensive in Taiwan. You get, them, you get them lots of places. Or you can order them online. And one CD, you have you know, hundreds of pictures you can use. And that's legal. And those pictures probably have not been seen by the audience before. 
So it makes it a much more easy, uh, much more interesting presentation. Or maybe some students get together and buy one, and you can use the graphics from there. Here's, a, here's some uh, CDs. Backgrounds, foregrounds, people, objects, things like that. Right? For sure, when you go to work, when you go to your job, you should not be stealing things from other people's graphics. So if you're working for someone, make sure you just get some graphic CDs. They don't cost much. You can also pay for online services, and they, you can just take, pay like a certain amount of money and you get graphics from a company online. Let's look at some different presentation uh, visual aids. Flip chart. Now the flip chart is actually not very popular in Taiwan. I don't know why. It is popular in other countries. A flip chart is uh, a tripod like this. It's so big, usually pretty tall, and it's uh, just paper, right? It's very basic, very simple. What are the advantages and disadvantages of a flip chart? Well, a flip chart's big advantage is it cannot break. The electricity cannot go wrong, the power cannot break, the uh, light bulb cannot break. Uh, there's nothing that can go wrong with a flip chart. So it's completely reliable, right? So it's very dependable. And I think this is one reason a lot of people like it. There's a few other reasons why it's good. It's also easy to use, and it's also easy to share. That means I can ask someone to write on it, students can write with me, other teachers can write with me, we can share with it. If somebody asks me a question during my presentation, I can turn it to an empty page and write something very quickly there, right? I can create something any moment, so that's called spontaneity. Spontaneity meaning you can, you can do anything at any time, so it's actually, uh, it can be very fun. Another good thing is they're easy to get the attention of the audience. I know this sounds strange, but when you use this, people pay more attention. Any idea why you, people would pay more attention to a flip chart? Why would somebody pay more attention to a flip chart? <laughs> Your body moves around, you're doing this, you're touching it, it makes noise. <laughs> right? Some people like to rip them off, too. <laughs> and some people just like to turn them over. It's all okay. Also, because very few people use it nowadays. It's different. Everybody uses PowerPoint. It's boring. Not everybody uses flip charts. It's interesting. So actually, using flip charts can get more attention. I know it sounds crazy, but it really does work. What are the disadvantages of a flip chart? If we look at the disadvantages of a flip chart, they include not everyone can see it if you have a big audience, right? A flip chart is maybe one meter, something like that, maybe even a meter and a half tall. So if your audience is very big, not everyone can see it. That's a problem. Also, flip charts are hard to transport because they're big. So if you need to take it somewhere, you have to carry it. It's very hard to carry because it's huge, right? You cannot put it inside your backpack. So usually the flip chart is already there. You just don't really take it with you. Okay, now this is the o OHP overhead projector, right? Overhead projector used to be the most common form for making presentations. Teachers always use overhead projectors until just a few years ago. What are the advantages of an overhead projector? Everyone knows how to use it. Now, this I'm not sure you know how to use it, though, because you've never used one before, have you? Yes? 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 One time only? No? Overhead projectors. In Taiwan, we don't use overhead projectors very often any, anymore, but in other countries, they still do. And remember I told you before that when you go to a conference, when you go to a presentation, they may not always have a computer projector because they're very expensive to rent. And if you have a conference, 
nobody wants to bring one in case it's broken or lost. So they may have the hotel to just use what the hotel has. And they don't want to rent the expensive thing so they can get this maybe for free or very cheap. And so how does this work? You need to use the slides, right? You need to use a piece of plastic. You can buy the plastic, put it into the printer, and it prints it on the piece of plastic. It looks very good. It's, very, it's, it's fine. So what are some of the advantages and uh, disadvantages of using this? You can use it with color also, but you have to have special plastic. You put it into the inkjet, and it can make color. They, they look quite good. What are the disadvantages of, you, of using these? They're easy to use, but you need to adjust things. You see the up and down? The up and down adjust the focus. Also, if you're too close to the wall, then the, the picture becomes very tiny. So you have to be just right, up and down, forward and back, to make the picture perfect. So it's kind of not easy to adjust, and if you never adjusted one before, it may be hard for you to get used to. Also, also, you right you put the plastic on it's upside down from right so when you when you're looking at it here it may look okay but there on the wall it's upside down right remember in our video I think wasn't her name Joanna right she got it upside down right okay so that's one of the problems so because of these problems uh, you know, if you're going to use an OHP, try to get to the presentation a little bit early so you can test it. Because you remember Joanna, she put it down and she, she didn't look. Because you don't want to be sitting there looking all the time, but she didn't know. So you've got to give it a test. Okay, now today what we usually use are the computers and the LCD projectors are very normal, right? What are the advantages of, of these? Well, one of the advantages is you can take your presentation on a USB or a CD-ROM or a memory card, and you can keep it in your pocket. So that's very good, right? That's very easy. But think about this. Think about this for one minute. Think about this. Like, if we have a conference in our department, if we have a conference, and we have a computer, and we have an overhead projector, right away there are many problems. Like, do you just let everyone put their USB in there? Because if everyone puts their USB in there, then you're going to get a virus. Mm -hmm. Right? It just happens all the time. So what are you going to do? Also, who's going to take care of this machine? There's two problems. One is it might get stolen, lost. Number two is who's going to put the USB in and, and copy the file? Right? So when you go to conferences, Although this is kind of more normal now, not everyone does this because it's too much trouble, right? Can you think about it? If you're in a hotel, when you go to the research conference, it's usually a hotel, not a school. In Taiwan, we do it in schools, but overseas, they don't do it on campus. They usually do conferences in hotels. So you're in a hotel, and my department must bring like 10 computers. Is that possible? And every computer is in a room and nobody's watching it. Is that possible? Mm, I don't, <laughs> right? It's not always possible. So this is a this is this is a this is kind of a problem with it that I that makes makes me uh, nervous if it was me. LCD pro and projectors are expensive, so you know it's easy that they could get lost or stolen. So it's not not always safe. Also, it's very high tech, and it's easy for something to go wrong, right? How many times, how many times have you watched someone? How many times have you watched someone trying to make the computer and projector working? And they're like, uh, okay, wait, uh, right? It happens all the time. And when you go to make your presentation, you only have a few minutes. So if you're spending your time trying to make this work, it's, it doesn't work out too good. So you need to be sure to check beforehand, before your presentation, if they have this machine, can you use it? Is it working okay? Can you copy your slides beforehand? Okay, so be prepared is the main point, right? Be prepared. How can you be prepared? You can have backups. What are backups? Backups are, for example, if you have a USB with your PowerPoint, maybe you should also mail your USB and email to your Google account or something, just in case it gets lost, right? 
also maybe you should have OHP slides just in case. They don't cost much. You can go to a copy shop and have them made. And maybe you have 20 slides, so you have 20 of these just in case they don't have a computer and projector. So these are a few things you can remember. How about your pointer, right? When you go somewhere, not everybody has a pointer for you, a laser pointer, so maybe you should carry one. Also, your remote control mouse, right? Your wireless mouse or clicker, right? You should have one ready because when you go to present, they may not have one. Usually, they don't. Sometimes they do, but it's not so normal, right? Or you don't know how to use it, so you have your own. I always take my own just in case. Okay, let's look a little bit at graphic design now. If we look at graphic design, we have some main points we can look at. Here is the square of the screen that you're showing to your audience, right? And so if you're looking at the screen, a basic rule of thumb is people tend to look from the corner and then go down the screen, right? So they want to, you want to put the important information up at the top and maybe up in the top corner. And then they look down, and this is something like the conclusion, something down here they want to see. So graphic design, basic idea. More important up top, and then you go down from there. Here we have some examples of charts and uh, line charts, pie charts, and other kinds of graphics, right? A key point here is keep it simple and easy to understand. And I think from our presentations last week, everyone was pretty simple. I like your pie charts. I like your charts. They're very clear. Things that you want to avoid are things like these, these pictures, right? These are like fancy graphics, things that show something like how many hamburgers did we sell or, or how many coffees did we sell. These things are hard for people to understand. I know they look interesting and they look cute, but it's very hard for the audience to understand. So you want to keep it as simple as possible, right? What are some of the key points to your charts? You need to have charts that have numbers. If you have something like pie sections or lines, you should include numbers so that people can see what, what it really is. Also, you need to have the key. What is the key? The key tells what, what, are the, what is the thing inside, right? The key. Make sure you have a key, and the key is big and easy to read. If you don't have a key, down here like this, if you don't have a key, then during your presentation, people will say, oh, what, what is that? What's the blue one? What's the red one? And they interrupt your presentation. So you try to have it, make sure you have a key. Okay, let's talk about something that's a little basic. PowerPoint, right? Everybody's using PowerPoint all the time. Although I think it's, it's better if you try something different would be more interesting, but everybody uses PowerPoint. So what's the problem with uh, PowerPoint? The problem I see with PowerPoint all the time is everyone is always trying to use the mouse to control PowerPoint. And what do they do? They always do this. They're always clicking to make it go forward. And then they right click to try to find a slide, you know? And then they try to find their slide here. And then they do this. And then they're going, oh, wait, um, uh, so I think it's here. No, it's here. And then, OK. Right? When it would be easier just to go backwards with your keyboard and forward, right? This would be even faster. So. Don't use the mouse, just use the keyboard, <laughs> right? I know it sounds so basic, but I've seen so many presentations, the same thing happens. Somebody gets lost, or the professor will say, can you go back to the slide with the model? And then somebody will go, um, uh, well, um, let me see. And then they get this here, and they say, mm, uh, 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 um, this one, uh, that one. Wouldn't it be easier just use the keyboard and you say, oh, you mean, you mean this one? And they say, yeah, that one. Wouldn't that be easier? You see, it's very fast. Even if your slides have lots of information, like my slides here, all you need to do is 
push the forward and back button. Look how fast it is. There you go. Okay, you mean here? Yeah, yeah, there. Right. You mean, you mean, oh, there, there. Oh, yeah, okay, there. Right? So just stick to the keyboard, right? And then things won't get mixed up and confused. I see lots of people making presentations. This is a problem. Okay, so remember how the keyboard moves, right? You just use the forward, the right button goes forward, the left button goes back. Everybody, everybody knows that, right? Don't forget it, right? Right button forward, left button back, that's all you do. Just use those buttons there, just like that, right? Sometimes you have a clicker, a remote control, and it has a forward and a back. So just use that, forward and back, that works. Okay, we do have an assignment this week. I want you to try in the next week when you, we, we can look at it together. And uh, this is create graphics showing the steps in your outline. <coughs> Exercise buying, paying, and eating and ice cream and marks to follow the KISS guideline. Remember to follow that. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to do the same assignment we did before, only now I want you to add graphics, right? Now you do not have to, you do not, have to follow exactly what you did before. You do something different, because we're trying to improve, right? We're trying to learn something, right? Do something different. So you could do what you did before, or you could change your ice cream thing, all right? Doesn't matter, your ice cream outline. But I want you to use the same idea. So the main topics are, you're choosing a flavor, you're paying money, then you're eating. Now I want you to add graphics, two, four, six, graphics that somehow expand, tell more, make it more clear, make it easy to follow, something. And you're completely free to do what you want. But remember what we're talking about, right? We want to use graphics that tell more, that help us see something that we couldn't see just from the person talking before, right? And same thing, has to get us interested and have a flow. Okay, so that's the assignment for next week. Graphics. Keep it simple. <laughs> right? And then next week, what should we do? I guess, I guess we can't draw it. It would take too much time to draw it. Would it take too much time to draw it? So maybe what you could do is prepare two, four, six PowerPoint slides. Okay, and then email that to my assistant, and then she'll give it to me, and then in class, we can quickly look at everyone's six slides. Okay, so I'm going to make a note here, and I want you to email me your PowerPoint six, email it to my assistant. My assistant's email is assist, uh, warden assistant, warden assistant at gmail.com. Yep, thank you. Okay. Uh, why don't we say the deadline would be just before class is fine. <laughs> I just need to get them and put them in the computer. So, you know, 10 minutes before class is fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put that on our schedule. Okay, very good. Okay, I put that on our schedule, drop that on our schedule. Okay, next we're going to take a little break. And then after the break, we're going to watch a few more video examples. And then we'll be finished for the day. Okay, 10-minute break. <laughs>